Module 5, Problems of Nose and Sinuses, Deviated Septum. By definition, deviated septum is an airway obstruction problem. This problem is caused by deflection of bone and or cartilage in the nasal septum. So the problem is airway obstruction. The common causes of deviated septum are trauma or could be congenital. For patients that are hospitalized for deviated septum, usually what you may find in their medical history are respiratory symptoms that are caused by this obstruction in the airway. Commonly you may see sinusitis, uh, could be allergic rhinitis. Some patients may have or develop uh, obstruction sleep apnea. As a result of this airway obstruction. The deviated septum could also be caused by a previous nasal surgery and also you may see patient come after uh, recent uh, nasal trauma that caused this deviated septum. In the physical examination the classical finding that you will see is what looks like a hump or a shelf. Uh, in one of the nasal cavity. Of course, it will be in one because of the deviation. Deviation could happen to the left or to the right. So you need to compare both nares. The management depends on the severity of the condition. If the condition is not causing severe respiratory complication, we can just manage the symptoms that this patient develops. As you see in the history, patient may complain of allergy, uh, chronic sinusitis. So for example, they can use anti-allergy or if it's an infective sinusitis, we can give antibiotics. If the deviation causes a problem, a respiratory problem, then we have to do some surgical management. The most common surgical management for deviated septum is septoplasty. As you know, plasty means to fix something and septo comes from the septum. Okay, now I want you to watch this video with me uh, you will see what happens during the septoplasty. This way you will be able to identify the patient's needs pre before and after the surgery. So this is a patient with a severe uh, septum deviation. And as you can see, the nasal cavity here is a pretty narrow. So um, what happened now, uh, this physician or ENT surgeon will uh, make a cut in the septum. And this is called endoscopic simple plasty and then after you make the cut the cut you can go through the cavity and dilate the cavity the narrow cavity now, as you see this is an invasive procedure surgical procedure so there's a bleeding so that's something you're gonna keep in mind now we're gonna make a cut in the nasal um, wall right here and this is a cartilage that is kind of narrowing uh, the um, cavity and so the treatment will include to remove a piece of this cartilage and this way we can make the narrow cavity a little bigger so this is a piece of the now the most important thing after the surgery the nasal splint so the nasal splint is the nasal splint is put for stability to prevent bleeding and to prevent tissue damage the splint is left there for two days and it must be removed by the surgeon. The stability of this splint is extremely important and this must be included in your teaching to teach the patient about things that they need to avoid so this splint stays in its place. Two days later, the patient will have to go to the clinic and then the splint will be removed by the surgeon. Now the patient can breathe again. So as far as the nursing care, as you've seen before, the pre-op, pretty standard, consent teaching. Uh, there's a risk for bleeding. As you see, there is a cut. So there is a bleeding. So we always, how you, you need to know how to assess this risk for bleeding, uh, especially for patient who's taking anticoagulants. So any patient who's taking anticoagulant agents we need to temporarily stop that now it depends on that agent and also we're going to check the PT, PTT and INR 
Post-op, again, the patient still, there's a risk for bleeding. That's why we put the splint. But this splint stability is very important. You want to teach your patient to avoid activities that can increase the internal pressure, uh, such as sneezing, uh, lifting, anything that can increase the internal pressure and lead to that, uh, you know, for this splint to move from the place. Teach the patient that this splint will have to stay for usually two days and then it will be removed by the surgeon after two days.